Welcome to Faro Field in Columbia, Missouri, where the Nebraska Cornhuskers will defend their number one ranking against the surprise team of the Big 12, the Missouri Tigers. Let's join commentators Brent Musburger and Dan Fouts with the call and the kickoff right here on ESPN Classic. Take a look at Corby Jones, number seven, the fine, improving quarterback, and Brock Olivo, the all-time rusher here at Missouri, an effort man. Wide receivers, Kent Lehman, maturing for the Tigers as the fall progresses. He's the go-to guy, number 84. But here's the key. How will this line hold up? Travis Beeble, can he get the job done against Wistrom today? We're about to find out. The first play of the game now for Corby Jones against this great Nebraska defense. One touchdown in three weeks. Straight eye. Jones going to throw it on first down. Gets one on one and a completion. Number 84, and there is Lehman making the first reception so it didn't take Jones long to get the ball up against this defense. They know they can't sit in and run against Jason and Grant Wistrom all day long. Perhaps two of the finest defensive linemen in college football today. Octavius McFarlane scooped up a fumble against Oklahoma and sent Nebraska on their way a week ago. Erwin Sweeney is number 16. He's a freshman. He's over on the left corner defensively right now, lining up. Missouri is going to test him. They show eight in the box right now, and Sweeney goes with a motion man, and Olivo with his first carry, and it's a first down, Missouri. There's the difference. The first six games, when they were struggling, they rallied after a nightmare of a loss to Kansas State. And over their last three games, 495 yards, Dan. And Brent, you talked about the time of possession that they had last week against Colorado. Well, that's really been the key. Each game this year, they have had the advantage in the time of possession. And the key for them has been good plays on first down. We're seeing a, a, a new type of down marker being uh, used here today. And perhaps uh, Brock Olivo came up a little bit short. Jerry Burnt, the offensive coordinator, told us yesterday that it's important to get good yardage on first down, but in order to keep drives alive, you got to convert on these third downs. So here is the third and inches. They'll show a split back formation with Ron James offset a little bit and Olivo the tailback. And right straight ahead goes Corby Jones. Jones, the junior from right here in Columbia. His daddy is the defensive line coach of the Tigers. His daddy, Curtis Jones, played here in Missouri as a 220 pound defensive end. Well, that's what Corby weighs right now. And this field, as you can see, has been torn up in rain during the week. And uh, it's real soft in the middle of the field between the hash marks. They go to a jumbo lineup using Chris Meredith as an extra tight end. Wearing the number 99, Corby keeps it, and Nebraska jumps on him, and Corby dives forward to the 32. Octavius McFarland there, number four, making the read for the Cornhuskers. Both these teams on offense are very similar. In fact, uh, Larry Smith would like to pattern his team uh, uh, after what they do up there in Lincoln. You can see that uh, the big thing here is that the fact that you can run the ball on the ground, you're going to be successful here in the Big 12. Sweeney, the freshman corner, is locked up to the left or the short side of the field. This is second and long. Break across. That's the tight end Eddie Brooks who jumped the snap count for Missouri, and this will be a costly five yards. Eddie Brooks is in the lineup because he's a good receiver. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. And he was on his way to the secondary on a pass route. A little too soon, though. That's John Laurie from Emporia, Kansas, who's our referee today. His umpire is Richard Wittenberg out of Lubbock, Texas. Coach Osborne looks on across the way. 
chance now to close down the Missouri offense after one first down and get their first possession. Second down and long for Corby, who's changing up at the line. He's looking at one deep, and now Sweeney backs off the line. They're pressing with Brown at the top, and timeout is going to be called. Corby Jones was about to throw apparently into the teeth of that defense, and Larry Smith told us yesterday that if he sees something he doesn't like, doesn't want, use the timeout and come on over to the sideline and we'll talk about it. Rather do that than serve up an interception down here. Missouri facing a second and 16, and Dan, you don't have a play like that for a Nebraska defense. Well, it's important that they just get half of it and try to pick up the other half on third down. So here we go. Corby Jones under center. Straight eye behind him. Two wide outs and a tight end. Layman's his motion man. And they'll chase with Sweeney, and Corby's going to keep it, and they didn't get close to half. McFarlane checks in on him first, and Peter jumps in second on him, and nothing doing, and now you're in third and a bunch. Real tough to run an option against Nebraska. They play against the option all the time. In fact, Nebraska's toughest game on offense each year may be their spring game where they're going against their own defense. Third down and 14. Devin West into the backfield and the shotgun look. Steps into the gap defensively and backs back out on Corby. Plenty of time. Receivers covered and Corby an outstanding runner is going to be close to a first down. Not going to get it. Great defense at the 40-yard line by number 22. Made it extremely close over there. Ralph Brown, the sophomore corner, coming up right at the marker to bring Corby down. That is a big-time defensive play. This is a great play, Brent, because what Brown did is he forced Corby to go to the outside. And I think Corby should have lowered his shoulder and taken on the defensive back instead of turning to the sideline. Look at that tackle. Head inside, pushes him out of bounds. And they're going for it. Oh, baby. What a gamble here early. Fourth down and short, but they're 9 of 10 on fourth down conversions. Let's see if Smith keeps it right in Corby's hands. Let's see if they use a hard count immediately. We're going to have a timeout. Nebraska is going to take a timeout. They had the punt return team already on the field. So if nothing else, it cost Nebraska a timeout. Let's see what Smith and Missouri counters with now. Well, the one thing that Missouri has in their favor is they have some huge running backs. Ron James, the fullback, 275 pounds. Look for Brock Olivo to line up in the deep eye behind James, and maybe they'll even put in Devin West or Ernest Blackwell to form a jumbo backfield. And then you got to count the quarterback. Corby Jones was in, uh, picked up the first down on third and short earlier in this drive. So they have a lot of big guys that they and a lot of options that they can use in this situation. I'll That's tell you one other option they've got. Corby Jones from the shotgun can punt it. On fourth down and short, if they do not show a deep man, Corby Jones is one of three punters on this Missouri team right now. And if they can get an open field back there, he may go for it. Although I am sure the Nebraska coaches are reminding the defensive backfield of just that possibility right now. Well, the one thing, if Jones goes back into a short punt formation or shotgun formation, then... Uh, now Jones is in there. They are going with the power yeah, eye formation. Power right. eye. Ernest Blackwell, James is in there along with Olivo, and here they come. Corby Jones hands it off. First down, Missouri. They answer the first test with Ernest Blackwell, the senior from St. Louis. And Smith and Missouri serves notice that they will not back down from number one. Here they come. This offensive line has just done a great job these last four games now. Watch the surge as they come off. Hamburger, Neymar, and then the big fullback, Blackwell, picks up the first down rather easily. Olivo gets about as deep in that backfield as any tailback we've seen this season. He's a good eight yards behind Corby. Long reach. Corby sprints out right. Going to throw it to an open man. It's Brooks. 35, 
30, 25, out of bounds at the 22. The crowd alive in Columbia on the opening drive for Kirby Jones and the Tigers. It's a play action fake, and from the far side here, that's the backside tight end. This is number three, Eddie Brooks coming out of the backfield. It's a huge game for Missouri as they just have a whole lot of momentum and confidence operating with number seven right now. Mike Brown and Sweeney caught up in the coverage and Brooks comes free as the clock comes on down. 10-23, the best defense against Nebraska. Keep possession of the ball. James to the 18-yard line. And again, that clock continues to tick away the big red. They haven't touched it yet here this afternoon. A key third down conversion on third and short, and then the fourth down and one when uh, they come up with the big line, the big backs in the backfield, and give it to Blackwell. But they have four running backs that can do a, a lot of damage, plus number seven. So against Osborne's defense, they've taken it down more than five minutes already. Second down and seven for the Tigers, and Corby changes it up. Olivo gets so deep, has to come up to get a quick count on it. Short drop, going to throw to Faith for the corner against Brown, incomplete. Kent Lehman, the intended receiver, and Corby wanted him one-on-one -on -one for the fade. This offensive line has been run blocking extremely well last couple of games. Well, today they're giving Jones a lot of time to throw as well. Quick three-step drop that time, and Corby just overthrew his receiver. That might have been a jump ball situation in the corner of the end zone. How about this for ball control? Right now, 11th play coming up, Brent. And the clock down at nine and a half minutes against Nebraska. Third down and seven. That's a lead off. And motion. Kobe's going to throw in a hurry. Spins away beautifully. 20, 15. Goes for the first down. And out of bounds. At the corner. A beautiful spinning move with Brian Shaw saving. The touchdown over there. Actually, it's Brian Shaw who can't bring down the 220-pound Corby Jones. This effort is just outstanding. That's the way he's been playing the last three weeks. Watch the effort to get into the end zone as he breaks another tackle. That one's Mike Brown. And finally, Jay Foreman comes over. I'm not so sure that ball wasn't across the goal line. Corby on a quick handoff and a lane over the top. Missouri strikes first. Attempting the extra point. Missouri seven, Nebraska nothing. But perhaps more important than anything is that for five and a half minutes, Nebraska has not touched the football. Brock Olivo, the all-time leading rusher at Mizzou, over the top for the game's first score. Judgment day indeed for Nebraska. And finally, the Cornhuskers will handle the ball with 9.23 left in the opening period. Short and high, Walker from the 9.20. Down at the 25-yard line. So Scott Frost, number seven, will bring the offense out here for Coach Osborne. Amon Green, over 1,000 yards rushing. And our Chili's lineup also features Joel Makovica at fullback. Kenny Cheatham, number six, steps into that starting lineup today for the Big Red. Behind their usual assortment of great offensive blockers, Josh Teskew played awfully well against Oklahoma a week ago. Here's the first down. Great option, team. 
Frost, Makovica, and Green. Sheldon Jackson, the tight end. And Frost going to throw on first down. Cheatham reaches down incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. The front four for Missouri defensively today. And this is the group that must hold up. Marquise Gibson has been a great rush man, but is he big enough against this stout offensive line? We're about to find out. Huge change at the linebacking core. Kevin Ford moves back to Bandit. He was an inside man a few weeks back. And in the defensive backfield, Wade Perkins, number 22, draws a start today. Bobby Newcomb. Out wide is a receiver. Frost runs the option. Here's a pitch to Amon Green, and he's blasted after a one-yard gain. Barry Odom and Justin Wyatt, number 39 and number 90, are there defensively for the Tigers. This is a great start for the Missouri defense, almost as good as their offensive start was. Watch the speed here. You talked about Wyatt as he and Gibson run a stunt at the top of the screen. Gibson takes away the inside, and there's just no place for Armand Green. Third down and eight for the Huskers. Now option to the wide side. Namon Green trying to catch the corner. And he is out of bounds at the 37. That's a first down for Nebraska. This is an excellent play on third down as the two receivers on this side ran off the defensive backs. And watch the effort now by Amon Green as he's going to lower his head and dive and pick up the first down. Cheat him out wide to the right. Wiggins to the left for Frost. An option up to the wide side and Frost wants to get a lick. Out at the midfield mark. Another first down for Nebraska. Harold Piercy, the junior free safety. And he'll be busy today. The young man from Kansas City making stops. That's a 13-yard gain for Scott Frost. Now here is Piercy, number two. He's their number one tackler, and this is why. But the bad thing about this is it's about 10 or 11 yards down the field, and it's another first down for the Cornhuskers. Cornhuskers are on the move. Three wide outs, one running back. Trail it by seven. Frost pin side pitch. Amon Green's got daylight to the 40. Donnell Jones, the nose man, got in. Right, this was almost an inverted option play. It goes down as a forward pass. It's a shovel pass inside, but for the quarterback, he reads it. He reads it just like a uh, an option play. Watch the teamwork between Frost and Green. There's the option to the inside. Another good play for Nebraska. Second down and two, and it's Amon Green stopped. Third down and one. Frost going to change it up. Crowd alive. Runs Makovica. Here's the option. Frost for the first down. The Missouri player is injured and down at the 38 yard line. That's Brian Craycraft. Senior from Mesa, Arizona, one of the defensive linemen. They're already a little bit shorthanded at that spot, and they can not afford to be losing players like Craycraft. This is the big concern for Larry Smith and the entire Missouri coaching staff. Can the defense hold up against Nebraska here this afternoon? That was the number one issue. They were pretty confident coming into this game that the offense could move the ball, and I think we saw why on that last series when they consumed more than five minutes and marched in for a touchdown. But for Moanke, the defensive coordinator there in the glasses, and the rest of the staff, the issue becomes one of trying to stop a team that is averaging 500 total yards a game. Scott Frost got hit right on the top of the head. He got up. He objects to that. Watch him point. At the perpetrator over there. He certainly should object to it. He was on his way back to the huddle. Talk about a late hit. And Kevin Ford was the guy, but you know, the thing that Anki told us about too, Brent, is that when you prepare for Nebraska, because they have so many ways of running the option, it's almost like preparing for a whole season in just one week. 
The one thing Tom Osborne will do with his team each year is, is rejuvenate his offense. Uh, give them more types of uh, option plays to run. And uh, nobody in the nation does it better than Osborne's team. Sophomore Steve Erickson checks in at defensive tackle. He's a young man out of Dallas, Texas. About to be tested on first down quarterback draw. And Frost to the 31 with Erickson hanging on. So right away, number 94 gets in on the action. Now he's been playing quite a bit lately. They've been running in uh, Erickson and Jeff Marriott because of what you talked about. They they get worn down at, at certain parts of the game. And when you go up against Nebraska, they have so many players. Their off second offensive line is almost as good as their first offensive line. Jeff Lake, who's been a bit nicked up, checks in along with Lance Brown, who is the wingback. And Frost here on second and five. Brings the option. Now the pitch to Amon Green. Green for the first down. Free. And finally out of bounds, but inside the 15-yard line. Easter, the strong safety from Houston, pushing him out. But you can see now the Big Red marching down the field. That's 18 more yards. Watch the strength of Amon Green as he's going to break the arm tackle of number 90, Justin Wyatt. And Wyatt's a big man, but Green, with good leverage that time, gets down all the way inside the 15-yard line. First down and 10 inside the 15. Back to pick on a spinner for perhaps a yard. A young man who has not lost any yardage yet this season. And of course, he shouldn't be losing too many yards from that up back or fullback position. But that time Al Sterling stopped him about as close to the line of scrimmage as you can make it. McAvick a week ago scoring three touchdowns. Dan, you had a very good point. You've never seen a fullback walk in untouched as many times as McAvick did a week ago. He had three touchdowns. One was from about five yards out, another one from about 35, another one from 32, and, and he was not touched on any of them. Cheatham and Newcomb are the wide receivers. And they're showing bump and run on Newcomb. I hope the career can run on him. And a penalty flag is thrown by the referee. Rashawn Jackson moved across. Short snap. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat. Second down. Now with the penalty at his second down and 13. High snap. Frost brings it down. Six points. Not to be denied. Scott Frost into the end zone. Quarterback draw all the way too, Brent. 16 yards and a great effort going over three Tigers at about the two-yard line. Here is Chris Brown, one of the best kickers in college football. When you want to argue about who's number one, do not overlook the kicking game and do not overlook the improvement of number seven. Nebraska 7, Missouri 7, 5.09 to go in the first quarter. Two possessions and two touchdowns. And, uh, well, Scott decided to take the rest of the day off. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> here's, here's Chris Brown completely out of the end zone. Missouri will put it in play at the 20-yard line. Now it's going to be interesting to see what adjustments the Nebraska defense is going to make quickly here against Corby Jones and the Missouri attack. The one thing about the Missouri attack is it's a lot like Nebraska's. I mean, Jones can be uh, equally as dangerous as Scott Frost running the ball. There's Charlie McBride down on the sideline. Long time great defensive assistant under Tom Osborne. Not one that's going to panic in this situation. Ernest Blackwell and Devin West are now the running backs. The fullback is very dangerous here. Blackwell. Lehman goes in motion for Mizzou. This will be West behind the left side, and you can see how they stopped him with Grant Wistrom, number 98, and over on the sideline, Scott Frost putting on the flak jacket, now puts the shoulder pads back on, and he'll be ready to go. He is a warrior. He must have had a problem with his pads. Uh, putting the flak jacket on, that's probably part of his normal equipment. He must have uh, ripped something loose with that great dive into the end zone. 
Second down and seven. Keeping Lehman in motion, trying to get him against that freshman. Corby rolls, keeps it, and he has stopped short of the 25-yard line. So nothing doing right now for Missouri with Mike Rucker along with Jay Foreman. So the linebacker is moving quicker to stop Corby Jones and take the keeper away from him on that slant play on this series. Well, what happens, Brent, is the linemen get double teamed a lot, so that means the linebackers are free to flow. Nobody gets a very good block on number 44. Chuck Foreman's son. Fine young linebacker, third and five. Now Jones roll left. Steps away from trouble, but no longer. Down in a heap, sacked at the 19-yard line. Jason Peter, number 55, leads the way that time. Jason Wiltz was also there, but there is a great defensive tackle, number 55. Boy, there's just one Husker after another coming after Corby Jones here. There's two go flying by, and then on the outside, Ortiz flies by and turns him back into the red pants of Nebraska. So here it is three and out and Jason Smith and a punt first for Missouri. Newcomb the middle man. Let's see if they punt away into the side. This is going to be a short and Nebraska will wind up with outstanding field position. A short field for Scott Frost. And the Cornhuskers coming up. A 24-yard punt. Now, Coach Larry Smith works with the special teams. And it doesn't make any difference, Coach, how much hang time you got this time. That was not far enough, baby. You don't even have to look at the hang time on this one. No, that take was, a bounce. Take a bounce, he says. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, maybe you're timing bounce time on a yeah, punt. Nothing that like board. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Larry Smith told us yesterday that when they were backed up, that Vince Zebo would be his punter. You know, coaches. <laughs> First down and ten. Here's the toss to Amon looking for an alley. The crease is there, and Amon Green battles his way to the 27 yard line. Perhaps overlooked in the discussion of great running backs. But a man who continues to pile up the yards. 15 more for Amon. This is just great patience. And usually you get this with a good running back behind a good offensive line. Look at that. Makovic gets into the mix. It's another big game for Amon Green as he's almost halfway to 100. 2.42 to go. Score is tied as Missouri struck first here in Columbia. Now the Cornhuskers bobble the snap. Now a late handoff to Amon. Slowed down at the 21 yard line. Still picked up six yards on that carry. When you go back to that punt, and, and even before that, the sack of Corby Jones of seven yards, and you see how important field position is. Last week, Nebraska had an incredible field position against Oklahoma. They come back, they answer the opening touchdown by Missouri with a nice 74-yard drive of their own, and now on offense, they just go half, they go half the field. Shevin Wiggins and Matt Davison in on offense. They're the wideouts. Here's Makovica. There's the play that netted three touchdowns. This time it nets a first down inside the 15-yard line, and Piercy the safety, making the stop for the Tigers. Now for a 235-pound fullback, Makovica has pretty nifty feet. Little belly play here. Makes a couple of moves there. Gets all the way to the safety, and all the way inside the 15. Brainerd, Nebraska. Played eight-man football. As many of the Nebraska fullbacks through the years have come out of that eight-man program in that state. 130 to go coming up on a first down and 10 for Nebraska inside the 15-yard line. 7-7. Scott Frost on a keeper again. Cuts back into the middle, and he's going to be down at the two-yard line. He is an awesome runner because he's not scared to take punishment. He's unbelievable. He takes you on like a fullback. Well, and remember the shot he took from Kevin Brown earlier in the game when he was getting up off the ground? I think he's mad. And when you add a little anger to uh, athletic ability like that, look how far he takes Shad Chris down the field after contact. 
what he's accomplished already today, averaging almost 10 yards a pop and scored one touchdown. And then at 111, we've got a timeout called by Nebraska. Frost wants to talk it over with Coach Osborne and the staff on the other sideline. Smith still concerned about that defense. That was the big issue coming into this game, but his punter betrayed him the last time out, too, giving Nebraska outstanding field position. Well, there are the Big 12 rushers, and there are some good, no make it great ones. Ricky Williams, four consecutive weeks of 200 plus yards on a team that's gone one and three. Amon Green with 13 touchdowns. There's Corby Jones and Scott Frost. The two quarterbacks are three and four, and the two are probably vying for the Big 12 quarterback of the year right here in this game. Amon Green and Legate in. Green stopped short. Could not battle his way into the end zone. Stopped at the one-yard line on the first down handoff. And that was a heck of a stop with Piercy, number two, in from that safety spot, making another stop. Yeah, that really was a great uh, job of two men finding the ball carrier and making the tackle. Piercy really lowered his head and made a great play. He's been a standout defensively, but he liked that defensive line and the linebackers to start making a few more stops. Here's your second down and goal. Remember Makovica, but this time Frost is hit, spins away to the right, and touchdown, Nebraska. Delayed call, they waited to see, and Frost scores his second touchdown of this game. And 12th the season, but it's the effort here, Brent. You call that he gets hit right there short of the end zone, but he spins across and clearly gets into the end zone for his second of the day. I guess the lesson here is don't make Scott Frost mad. Indeed. When you see him start to undress on that sideline, beware. <laughs> Let me go put on some more pass. Yeah. So the extra point is good. And just like that, two possessions, two scores. Missouri woke him up. It's 14-7 Cornhuskers. West and Ross back deep. On the ground, high, tough bounce. Ricky Ross has got it. Sprints left, 25, alley 30. 35, Brown blocked near midfield, and number three, a defensive starter for the Huskers, Eric Warfield, may have saved the day for Nebraska. Chris Brown was coming over on the play, and he was blocked. And he was blocked by Devin West, number 32. 47 yard return now for Ricky Ross. Look at the effort out in front there. That may have been an illegal block, but Ford did turn his back on the blocker. And that's exactly what Missouri needs, is a short field. And they've got one, Dan, 48 yards. Let's see if they can make it work for him. Chains checks in at that fullback spot he'll be lined up and they show wide open they flood with three wide receivers for corby to the right it's a passing game that's been improving he's gonna throw bouncer as the defensive pressure got to it and he had no chance to throw the spiral out to his three wide receivers what a defensive front Nebraska features. Take a look at Jason Peter. look at him get off the ball number 55. Yeah, well, then watch him get his hands up and that's why that ball came out bouncing. Six foot five. Corby Jones, uh, about six one, maybe not quite that tall. Hey, my friend right down the road, Dick Vermeil in St. Louis, he better take a look at this Jason Peter. Man, this kid's an awesome defensive tackle. Second down and ten. Corby fakes the handoff. Sprint right. Free at the 30-yard line, Murchison, and out of bounds. Great effort that time by number 81, Jay Murchison, the senior from Richmond, Virginia. And a couple of weeks ago, Corby Jones got together with his wide receivers, and he asked them to make big plays. 
is a pretty good throw by Jones and a great effort that he never saw by his wide receiver, Jay Murchison. Watch as he spins away from Brown. He gets a little help from his tight end and sets up the offense in good shape here at the end of the first quarter. <laughs> right, and here it's 14-7. Nebraska with the lead. Charles Woodson. Oh, Dan Fouts loves that score. <laughs> Keep him up to date on that one. Forget Michigan and Penn State. Get on that Oregon right away. Right, New York. First down and 10. A fullback for Missouri. Gained a couple of yards. Ernest Blackwell. He's more of a running threat than James. James, the wide body blocker. So when 33 checks in, you can expect him to get right in the middle of the action. He mentioned Charles Woodson. Folks, there are three players who deserve serious consideration now. You know, you got to wait till November to see who the players are. Ricky Williams at Texas, Charles Woodson at Michigan, and of course, Peyton Manning at Tennessee. There's your three ringleaders for the Heisman. Second down and eight, and James is in at that fullback spot. Corbin going to show option and pull back from it. He's got a man wide open. Touchdown! Best option pass of all. And I remember Tony Rice at Notre Dame using this to perfection for Lou Holtz. And here today, it works for Corby Jones and Missouri. Scott Nickman for the point to tie it. So for three weeks, Nebraska allows only one touchdown. And here in the first half, Missouri strikes and scores twice. Getting behind the secondary, Coleman is wide open. Great fake. You've got to be able to run that option. And he jumped a little bit, but he hung on. We'll be right back. Missouri battles back to tie number one ranked Nebraska. It's 14 all right now, and they've already qualified for that bowl. Where will they go? San Antonio, perhaps. Tucson, maybe. Honolulu. It's all up in the air now. On the ground, fielded at the 13 yard line by Walker. A flag is down. There is a flag on the return by Walker. The flag is way back at uh, about the 40-yard line. Should be offsides against Missouri. It's a pretty good return by Walker. I'd be surprised if uh, Tom Osborne just takes the ball right here, turns that offense loose again. You know, pretty good symmetry in this game, Brent. Uh, the Tigers come out. They go 78 yards for a score. Nebraska answers with a 74 yard drive and then a couple of short drives 42 for Nebraska now 48 for Missouri this is how our two quarterbacks compare so far Corby Jones with a touchdown pass and Scott Frost and has rushed for two scores you know, Frost brings the offense back to the attack Lance Brown is his wing back Amon Green's his tailback operates without the fullback Two tight ends in this look for the Huskers. Ramon Green picks his way, and we get down to Jackaroo, Jack. Grand offensive coordinator from Missouri, Jerry Burns, says one of the reasons why the offensive line is performing so well now is because of this man, Andy Moeller. One of the things that I've noticed on the sidelines here is each time the O-line comes off the field, he gathers them around and literally begins to continue the teaching process. In addition, one of the things he just said to them is, you've got to believe in yourselves. So far, they do. Andy, one time a linebacker up at Michigan. Gary Bowler, his daddy. Second down and five. Option from Frost. To the 35-40. 45 and... Finally out of bounds as he tight work walked the sideline at the 48 yard line and a first down for Nebraska. 15 more yards and there's a pair. Wistrom and Peter. But the defense over here has to be concerned. And Dan, you made the point about Wistrom 
And a uh, possible leg injury, you said? Brenti uh, has a bruised thigh that's real close to his knee. And what happens then is you get all this fluid that seeps down into the knee and makes the knee very sore. But you sure can't tell by the way he plays. Goes down. Frost in the eye. Fake to Amon. Wide open. Another first down. A beautiful pattern run by Sheldon Jackson, the pass receiving tight end that time, number 88. Boy, just like that, in two plays, Nebraska picks up 30 yards. Frost is so determined, though. It's just it's great to watch his improvement from just a year ago. No pass rush at all, and a wide open tight end. Kenny Cheatham off to the quarterback's left here on first down. Ball is at the Missouri 36 yard line. Nebraska and Missouri tied at 14. And Amon Green is stopped on first down. Harold Piercy joined the fray again from that safety spot, helping out on that tackle. Barry Odom threw a shoe making that tackle on Amon Green. That's a big hit when uh, your shoe comes off when you tackle a guy. So the Huskers offensive line will get down for the second and eight. Wade Perkins, number 22, is the new corner. Frost options wide side, pitch him on three. Out of bounds, but inside the 30-yard line and short of a first down. So a third down coming up here for the Huskers. That was Shad Chris, number five, certainly one of their best defensive backs. You know, Brent, it looked like uh, Missouri did a good job of stringing this play out. Sam Joshua, number 51 there. But then you look up and uh, Green gets real close to a first down. Even when Missouri seems to make a good play on defense, Nebraska's picking up yardage. Third down and two. Can they stop? Makovica and Green here. Makovica leads. Green searches. Searches. Got it. Inside the 20. Now breaks free. And Amon Green to the seven-yard line. Almost turned a first down into a touchdown run. 21 yards. Bad tackling on the corner by the Tigers. You know, a lot of his success today, Brent, and all season long, has come to the short side of the field. And this offensive line is just blotting out any black shirt there is. Taylor getting way down the field to add another key block. Easter hanging on from behind, or it would have been six. 11 carries, 86 yards for Amon Green. Tied at 14, 11 and a half to go. On the first and goal, Makabeka spins to the three-yard line. Erickson reaching in on the stop for the Tigers that time. And you've got to be aware of the fullback in this type of offense. Makovica comes in with a 7.7 .7 yards per carry average. Not quite up to that yet today, but look at the yards that his quarterback and his tailback are making. In a four. Nose man, Donnell Jones, number Second. 97, checks into the goal line defense. Second three. down and goal. Ball is at the three-yard line. Frost eyes the defense. He's scored twice today. Brings the option. Going to keep it, and he'll be short this time. They were ready for the quarterback keeper. He probably... Would have been better off pitching the ball that time. Joshua and Jones, who just checked in, made the stop for the Tigers. It's such a split-second decision for the quarterback on the option. He's got to read the defense as he's running, knowing that their guy's coming to knock his block off. You know, number 51 right there, that's Joshua. He's the only player on the Missouri team who was alive in 1973, which was the last year that Missouri beat Nebraska in Columbia. Now it is third down and goal. Power eye for the Huskers. Frost with a penalty flag, walks in, but there's a penalty flag thrown by the referee behind the formation. So it could have been an illegal formation and a shift by Nebraska that time as that man threw the flag. Uncharacteristic that uh, Nebraska would have two men moving at the same time, and especially Amon Green and Joel McAvicka. I think McAvicka was supposed to be moving. But watch number 30. Here's Green, and here's Makovica. Makovica is supposed to move, but watch Green. 
He's not supposed to do that. That's two men moving, and you get that yellow hanky flying. They thought they were playing for Saskatchewan or Calgary. They beat Saskatchewan or Calgary any day. Anybody else uh, north of the border, I think. They're down in goal for Osborne Tuskers from the seven yard line. They show that double wing formation that they used against Oklahoma. Blast straight ahead for the Mon Green for the touchdown. Seven yards for Amon. Larry Smith's biggest fear is that his defense would get worn down. They haven't come close to stopping Nebraska yet. Brown again. And he boosts Nebraska back into a seven point advantage here. Welcome back to Columbia, where the upset minded Tigers cut the Nebraska lead when kicker Scott Nickman converted a 39 yard field goal. With the score now 21 17 Huskers, we resume our coverage with the ensuing kick here on ESPN Classic. Well, finally, Coach Norm Stewart has a football team that the basketball team here at Missouri could be proud of. Coach, a big-time football fan. He's been around today watching, moving around the press box. The basketball team will be getting ready here soon for everybody across the country. Great time of year. 5.25 to go, 21-17. Missouri after the field goal. Kicks it to the one-yard line. To the 10 is Joe Walker. Walker cuts over to the left. Down at the 23. Well, Jack Aroot, Corby Jones is showing us a whole bunch here today. Well, you know, Brent, just as Dan was saying, he really wanted to work on refining his throwing motion. So he dropped 10 pounds Game. over and the summer the and worked specifically with it with each and every one of his receivers. The offshoot of it was the fact that with each receiver, he came up with a very special route. In the huddle, all they'll simply say is, run our route. I wonder if that big gain, that big pass, was one of those our routes. Indeed, and here Scott Frost in Nebraska realizes not a lot in the first half, and on that delay, that was his man again, number 30, Amon Green, on the delay before Wade Perkins, the cornerback, could make the stop. But 18 yards later, and another Nebraska first down. So Amon Green has been leading the way for the Cornhuskers today. 13 carries and 111 yards. And Nebraska showing no mercy, going with a hurry-up offense here with five minutes to go in the first half. Missouri with great offensive numbers here in the first half. Great job by Corby Jones and the coaching staff and the offensive line against Nebraska. Here's Amon Green to the 47-yard line. A little bit short-handed at that uh, I-back spot. At Nebraska, that's been one of the most famous positions in college football. Lawrence Phillips, of course, he's right down I-70. Rams with a tough one tomorrow up in Green Bay. Unfortunately, they'll go there with Orlando Pace sideline by a knee injury. So Wayne Gandy moves over to the left spot. Fred Miller comes off the bench for the Rams, who looked awfully good and lost a toughie in Atlanta last week. Four and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Cheatham checks in at wide receiver and Bobby Newcomb the whiz from Albuquerque New Mexico number 12 if they can just put the ball in his hands they won't this way and Amon Green crosses the 50 yard line we'll see where they spot it he's going to be close to a first down they have just so many ways to beat you with their offense they can run the option Frost is having a huge first half they can throw the ball and you talked about Newcomb he came out of nowhere last week against Oklahoma for the 40 yard touchdown catch. Well I know that's a story that you wanted to know more about a young man who was born in Africa and moved over to New Mexico and of course was uh, recruited by the Cornhuskers and looks like he's going to be a dandy still would like to try quarterback I think. They <laughs> All right first down and 10. And Frost keeps it. Big gap. First down for the Huskers. Ball is whistled dead. I think you can hear the whistle 
before the ball came free. There was no question about that call by the officials. A 12-yard run for Scott Frost. Dan, let me ask you this. You played so many great years in the NFL, and, and it's a question about Frost as a, as a pure thrower, which is what the NFL like. What would you do with this young man? He's such a good athlete in the NFL. Well, he's. I think he's a, a potentially a safety in the NFL. I, I like the fact that he's a, a tough guy, not doesn't shy away from contact. People are booing because they see the jumbotron here. They think it's a fumble. But uh, I think Frost has a future in the NFL. Not a quarterback. I think he's on the other side of the ball. Yeah, clearly the whistle was blown. Though we, we, I suppose we had the advantage of hearing it. Intercepted. Chris is standing there, and Chad Chris with speed brings it to the 40, 45. Penalty flag down at midfield as Chad Chris may have just made the biggest play of the first half. It has been a first half of a lot of big plays. This is the first one for the Missouri defense. You're right, Brent. Watch Chris just stand here, wait for this ball to come down. As he comes off the receiver on the outside, Matt Davidson, and they're gonna get uh, the penalty against Missouri here on the return. But I don't think Scott Frost ever saw Shad Chris. And it's a personal foul call. Oh, it's against going Nebraska. against Nebraska. Yeah. Tack it on, baby, and bring it to the other side of the Jeff Marriott may have caused that interception. I think he caused Frost to have to throw off the back foot when the big sophomore nose guard broke in on him. And now with the personal foul, and Tom wants to know who it is, who lost his poise out there, because he'll be talking to the young man, and the ball is put down the 35-yard line. And now can Corby take it in again and regain the lead? What a first half. And I think you're right about uh, the pressure. And I also think that Frost was looking into the sun and never saw Chris. All right, so here we go. Hang on. The Tigers stalking that lead again. Play fake. Corby rolls right. Got all kinds of time back. Wide open to Levo. 10-yard line. Touchdown, Missouri. Mizzou leads it. 35 yards. for two touchdowns out of 11 throws, 183 yards, and you've got to kill a team after you get a big turnover. That's what Corby Jones did. Here's Nick Moore, perfect. Can you believe this? On Judgment Day, Missouri riding the crest of a three-game winning streak behind Corby Jones, takes a 24-21 lead on the top-ranked team in the nation. Starts Lehman. Fakes the handoff and now keeps it going to sprint. Incomplete. And for just a moment, Eddie Brooks was wide open and he didn't hit him. Earlier in the year, Corby Jones was completing about 40% of his passes. And these people here that are wearing the black and the gold are disappointed now when he doesn't complete a pass. Did you hear the groan that time when that ball fell incomplete? What a turnaround for Corby Jones. Well, Corby Jones stays out there. Coach Smith did not even move toward the two punters. It's fourth down. They need four yards to go. And they're going to show shotgun. Now, remember, he can punt out of this, folks. And he's backing up like he looks like he's going to pooch it on him. Nobody's back. Can he drop it down? Yes, he is. Off the side of his foot now. High. Inside the 10. Missouri's going to down it. Inside the five-yard line. How about that? Nebraska buried on the one as Coach Smith finally turns it over to Corby Jones. I've been waiting for that play all day. You talk about great coaching. That was a great example of what Larry Smith means to this football team. Smiles all around on the pooch punt by the quarterback. 
Dan, what went wrong on this? Well, as Corby Jones drops back here, Mike Brown should have gone back deep. Obviously, Jones is going to punt this ball. They've had all kinds of problems with the other two guys. This goes 35 yards down to the one. Scott Frost and the Cornhuskers coming out for the one. McAvicka for a yard and no more. And the Tigers jump on him. And you can just feel the emotion on that Tiger sideline and in watching their defensive players in particular. Ford and Sterling, two of Moanke's linebackers, jumping McAvicka at the point of attack. You Second down the, for Osborne now. Well, and you can see the confidence. Missouri comes into this game hoping to win. They have changed from hoping to expecting to win. Look at this group. Frost gets ready. Play fake him on. They're going to throw out of the end zone. Fires call. Juggle Newcomb reached back in on the ball and grabbed it. There's the freshman from Albuquerque. He bails Nebraska out. 34 yards on the play to Bobby Newcomb, who was juggling and somehow reached back and grabbed it. And Brent, I know where Bobby Newcomb has come from. Here he is right here. It's a single receiver route here this time. Great pass protection after the play fake. And the concentration after he juggled it three or four times. What a play. That is amazing, Dan, on that juggle for a freshman to be hanging on. Fullback out to the 41 yard line. Watch the hands of Newcomb. Now, again, for those of you who don't know, this is the quarterback of the future, maybe, but he does so many things. How can they keep him off the field? What a great picture that was. <laughs> yeah. Our director, Drew Esikoff, our producer, Jimmy Ressler. Great camera work again here in Columbia, 24 21. Missouri with the lead, Nebraska with the circus catch. And now, second down. The option look again. Frost is going to be well short. And they're taking pot shots now at Scott Frost every time he's got the ball. Look at the cut on the arm, a couple of bruises there. And this is why a lot of black helmets are hitting number seven now. Big difference in this play that we saw in the first half is there's a lot of Tigers still on their feet. Here's third down of one. Back and gets down in front of the line. Green. Frost is your quarterback. Here's the toss to Green. They're going to try to run wide for it. And he has to dive back in. He gave the Missouri defense a little time to come after him with that deep play on third and one, but they made it in the end and kept this series alive. He's really got great power and explosion, and he, he seems to really thrive on situations where he needs just a, a couple of yards because he really gets low and just sells out completely to pick up the first down. First and 10, Nebraska. About 151 yards for Amon Green. Inside five minutes, third quarter here in Columbia. Akavica slams to the 48-yard line, and Marriott. The nose man, 93, is there. Frost on a fake. Going to throw back. Screen over here on this side to Amon Green on a cutback. And Green breaks free. 30, 25. Angle and out of bounds. And that is Harold Piercy who saved the touchdown. It's a throwback. Green to Amon Green. Frost is going to come out here. Green is going to go this way. And this is perfectly executed by Nebraska. Missouri absolutely loses Green. And he's got a convoy out front. And here she saves the day. First down at the 13 yard line. 405 to go in the third with Jack Root, Dan Fouts, I'm Brent Musburger. Nebraska trailing, but Makavica, their fullback, their walk-on fullback, pounding down close to the 10-yard line on a first down. Makavica looks like he's wishing for the good old days of seven days ago. Where is that Oklahoma defense when we need it, huh, partner? <laughs> he's getting touched a bit today. Three and a half minutes. 
left here in the third. Now Scott Frost keeps it again, cuts back inside the five yard line, twists for the end zone, reaching out for the goal line, battling for the loose ball, and let's see where the officials say it is down. I never heard a whistle blow, Brent. No, I didn't either. Scott Frost probably would have been a lot wiser. He had a first down, not to be reaching out like that for the end zone, but I think they may whistle that it's down anyway. First down. Yeah, he was down by rule. So it will be first and goal for the Huskers. You know, Brent, this is uh, at the end of this play. Frost is down, clearly down. The ball came out when it hit the ground. All Nebraska's done. It's gone 98 yards now. Frost has scored twice already today, and he bucks it right in. And Scott Frost puts it in for the third time today. Nebraska regains the lead. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. A struggle for Tom Osborne's Cornhuskers, top ranked and favored by four touchdowns here in Columbia, Missouri. A 99-yard drive for the Cornhuskers. The big play, Newcomb's juggling catch on second down. And then the Amon Green screen pass. There's the extra point added by Chris Brown. So the freshman sensation for the Cornhuskers. Bobby Newcomb, six foot, 185 pounds. A freshman sensation. Bails him out on this play. Watch the juggle, the concentration. And the Huskers are finally on their way for 99 yards. But it's a struggle all the way against Mizzou. We'll be right back. The moon over the Big 12. Colorado has to rally. Oklahoma State with another big win. Texas A&M driving toward the Big 12 title game. And Kansas State wins again under Bill Snyder. They could be headed for the Fiesta Bowl with a Sugar Bowl. Here it is Chris Brown kicking it off. And now Missouri must answer the call again. Coming out this time is Devin West. Here it is. 30-yard line. Free. 40. 45. 50. Into Nebraska territory. And finally down at the 30. West, 58 yards for Mizzou. Missouri continues to answer the call of Nebraska. Special teams this time. And West refuses to go out of bounds here. Pushes two Huskers away and unfortunately tackles up his feet. But he gives his team 35 yards for the score. And as a reward, he's in a tailback. Corby Jones, the do-everything quarterback, brings the option in trouble, spins back the other way beautifully, got an open man. It's Brooks, bashed out of bounds, as Corby Jones shows you how well he can create on the move. 14 more yards, he's a magician. He's very athletic. This play, obviously, was not designed for Corby Jones to run over here and then run around there like that. This is just pure athletic ability. The Cornhuskers come with a great pass rush here, but again, they failed to cover a receiver from Missouri. Ernest Blackwell is the fullback directly behind Corby Jones. Whiskey. They bring the option, and Corby keeps it. Corby inside the 20, and he is down at the 17-yard line on first down. Jay Foreman, the son of the former Minnesota Viking great Chuck Foreman, number 44, the middle linebacker for the Huskers, makes the stop. And the, the one thing that the Corn Huskers have done very well is shut down the run since the first quarter. And maybe it's because uh, they're getting good play from the other side of the defensive line. That's Jason Peter and uh, Grant Wistrom there that time, but it looks like Missouri's trying to run away from them. They've not had any success running the ball since the first drive of the first quarter. Here's second down and seven for Kirby. Slot is off to the wide side of the field for Mizzou. A play fake, and Kirby rolls in that direction. He's going to throw the flare pass to Blackwell. Blackwell battling inside the 10-yard line. First down, Mizzou. 
A team named Desire. Under Larry Smith, it took him four years and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Larry Smith can't believe what he's seeing out here. He knows he has big, strong running backs. None any stronger than Blackwell as he picks up the first down. Nebraska leading Missouri 28-24. They've been trading the lead, and Missouri drives down for a first and goal at the 10. And the fullback, Blackwell, to the six-yard line into the heart of the Nebraska defense with Dan Fouts and Jack Aroot. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along with us. It figures to be a wonderful fourth quarter. Just a great setting here in Columbia, Missouri. A program that has come back with three straight wins. They're at the line right now. Second down and goal. Corby on the option to keep her to the six-yard line and hit hard. You can see Foreman is there. Rucker, who has played a whale of a game at that other defensive end spot for Nebraska coming in from the backside with a minute to go here in the third quarter for Larry Smith who will have a big decision to make third down Devin West the running back Corby's going to go back deep drop try to throw back not there going to sprint now outrun Rucker dives for the end zone goes airborne Corby Jones touchdown over the top Say that was a tear in Larry Smith's eye. This is a stuff of fairy tales. You're a 29-point underdog, and you're back ahead again, and you're trading shots with the number one team in the country. Early in the fourth quarter, Chris Brown broke the Cornhuskers' school record for consecutive field goals when he nailed a 44-yarder to tie the game at 31. Later, a deflected pass and interception gave Nebraska possession. We rejoin the action now with 7.30 remaining in regulation here on ESPN Classic. 78 yards away, the number one team in the country with seven and a half minutes and tied at 31 in regulation in Columbia, Missouri. Frost cuts back off the option. Marquise Gibson among those hitting him at the 22-yard line. Scott Frost gets up and says, where did that guy come from? Weak side, Marquise Gibson put the pressure on Frost when he was turning back. Check out right here that play by Mike Rucker forces the ball wide of the receiver right into the hands of Joe Walker. Second and nine and Bobby Newcomb, their sensational freshman, has come down to the short side of the field. He'll be the flanker. They move the tight end over to show power that side. Frost is going to throw back to the right now. Comes back to the middle, deflected, intercepted. Missouri's got it at the 35-yard line. Got a chance, and it's picked off by Piercy. Harold Piercy, the safety, who's been a whiz all day, gives Mizzou a shot at the 30-yard line. Jason Peter, 55, out of Locust, New Jersey, hanging on. Really important now for Missouri to take care of the football. They're already in field goal range, and a field goal would give them the lead, obviously. They want to take time off the clock, keep the ball on the ground, let that big offensive line work as they've been working all day long. And they send an offensive tackle, Chris Meredith, wearing number 99, into lineup. 
They give them both right. Ron James also in. It's the jumbo. And Alivo following the jumbo side to the 23 yard line. 546 left here in regulation. Yeah, Chris Meredith has been uh, their backup offensive tackle, their utility lineman, can play the left side or the right side, but recently, uh, during this winning streak of Missouri, they've had big number 99 playing a lot of tight end. He's a great blocker, and he adds a lot of beef to that offensive line. Bringing the play clock on down, seconds ticking away, trying to score and not give Nebraska too much time. This is Olivo again with that great effort. Battles his way for a first down close to the 15-yard line. Brock Olivo, who a week ago took a video camera with him because he said he wanted to record the great story that was going on with this football team. They went in and torched Colorado, their third straight victory. He's a great overachiever. He doesn't have great bursts of speed. He just somehow gets it done. And he got it done behind big number 99, Chris Meredith, who just crushed the defensive end on that side. Alivo already at the tailback spot. Perfect so far. On a fake, Corby Jones rolls hard to right. Got wide open the touchdown. Missouri leads it. 439. Eddie Brooks all alone in the end zone. Scott Nickman. That's the extra point. 38 31, four and a half minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been here before. His name wasn't Corby Jones, it was Doug Flutie. And they shot it out one day down in Miami in a game that will live forever. Right now, Corby Jones is trying to write another chapter that will live forever. We'll be right back. Those three wins in a row, Brent, were all upsets. I think they're ready for another one. But Nebraska has pulled out miracles before against Missouri. Walker's been very busy. He also made an interception a short time ago, and then they gave it right back. Coming down the sideline, and he is out of bounds. Here's the toss to Amon Green. That green is stacked up at the 29-yard line. Let's go and back and find out how this man gets so wide open. After the play fake, Corby Jones is going to roll out and it's a pick play at the bottom of the screen. Eric Warfield is picked off by the wide receiver. The officials miss it, but Corby Jones doesn't miss it. Second down and nine for Frost and Nebraska. Frost inside, fumble! Incomplete, incomplete pass. pass. Yep. Incomplete pass on that shuffle forward. And Dan Fouts right on top. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, know, I know the difference between an interception and incompletion and a fumble. And, and this looks like the option play, but it's inverted. It's a shuffle pass, and if the guy doesn't catch it, as Amon Green takes his eyes off it, it's just an incomplete pass. Sure got these folks excited, though, didn't it? They're down at nine. Victory number 251 has not been easy. May take a while for Coach Osborne. Frost, option, now to pitch. Here's Amon, and Amon is down hard at the 35. And with 3.40 to go, it is fourth down for Osborne and the Cornhuskers. Would they dare do something again? Well, the punt team? It's a good thing we just showed that uh, Bumaruski. They had better field position that time. This is great team defense by Missouri. 
A lot of black shirts running to the ball, and right in the middle is their defensive coach, Ricky Hundley. Jesse Cush. Sometimes the fullback, Makavica, and he's in as the upback. Makavica is the upback for Nebraska. Tom and the coaches say the defense can get it back for him. Ross fields at the 19, and he'll be down at the 22. At the line of scrimmage on first down, Corby Jones. One of the wonderful stories of the year in college football. Ernest Blackwell and Devin West are the running backs. Blackwell picks his way. Just short of the first down, Eric Johnson making the stop for Nebraska. And Brent, you won't believe this, but the sprinklers at the right end of the end of this football field have just turned on. This is unbelievable. This is the Missouri end zone where they're driving. And there's seven or eight sprinklers that are rolling. Well, they've had five downs here. And this the may be their way of keeping the fans from tearing down the goalposts. A little premature, though, I think. I told you that Coach Smith wanted a slow field here, Dan. <laughs> He's <laughs> got a slow end zone, that's for sure. I don't think I've ever seen that happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, welcome to college football, right? Two forty-three on the clock. The sprinklers already celebrating, and now they've quieted down on a penalty flag. Comes fine. They call illegal substitution against. Missouri for having 12 men in the huddle. Larry Smith doesn't like it at all, but you think is a that they big would call. That is a huge call. That is third down yeah. and short, and now it becomes third and six. I don't you can't blame the coach in this situation, but the official was right there looking at it. Oh, what a difference. And Amon Green just hoping that he gets one more chance. Well, you're right, Brent. Third and inches, and uh, Missouri's been able to convert that situation all afternoon. Jane's in at fullback. Devin West is the tailback. Corby on the option, keeps it, cuts free for that first down. Got it. Corby Jones to the 40 yard line. First down, two minutes to go. A 14 yard run for the Wizards. He's already passed for a career high, and now he's calling upon his running ability to win this ball game. Turns it up inside, keeps his balance there, and then just overpowers the Cornhuskers. First down, Mizzou. Blackwell, the fullback. Corby changes and brings that play clock down. Doesn't want to lose five yards. Gets it off that one. Here's Blackwell. Straight into the heart of that Nebraska defense. And Jason Peter, number 55, brings him down. And a timeout's going to be called by Nebraska. The last win over Nebraska. And the last win by Mizzou here was 1973. Second down. And nine for Corby Jones and Missouri. Here's West picking his way to the 47 yard line, short of the first down. Leave him about third and three. Wilts making the stop for the Black Shirts. So the pressure is on Coach McBride and the defense right now to make a play and give the offense and the quarterback, Scott Frost, a chance to do some magic here with only 1.20 to go. Time is running out. These first downs, I cannot stress how important they are. The punting game had been atrocious in the first half for Missouri. 
Corby Jones with a beautiful pooch punt in this half for Missouri. And now the first downs are taking the kicking team off the hook, and Osborne wants to bring the defense over as third and three is coming up for Corby Jones in Missouri. Uh, the one thing Osborne and Charlie McBride should be talking to their defense about is, hey, number seven. He's the quarterback. His name is Corby Jones. He's got about 300 yards in total offense today. Let's think about trying to stop this guy. And it's not going to be just one guy that can stop him. Jones has shown the ability to run away from people, to pull through tackles, and watch for him on some type of option play on this third down. So clearly now the voters will throw number one up in the air regardless of what happens. Michigan has made a big statement in Happy Valley today. It's still to come tonight. Florida State and North Carolina in Chapel Hill. It was indeed Judgment Day. Now third down. Judgment Day for the Nebraska defense. They must make a stop here. Corby brings the count down. Brings the clock inside of five. Can bring it down to one and snap it just like an NFL veteran. Brings it on the option. Going to be short of that first down. There was a timeout left for Nebraska. And they use it right now with 1.13 to go. And Coach Smith must decide which of the punters will he use. I know which one I would use. I would use this kid right here. Put him back in normal punt formation and let him kick it. You know he's going to make the play. We'll come back half a minute just to check in on some programming coming your way Sunday on ABC and we'll be right back. Missouri most points this year against the Nebraska defense and a chance now just 113 away from the big upset. Tom Osborne and the Huskers reeling right now facing a fourth down and Jason Smith gets the quick snap and booms one. There's their best, longest punt of the year. Fielded by Newcomb. Here he comes. 30 and hit at the 33-yard line. So they do not let him break the big play that time. And Scott Frost and Nebraska will have a minute two to work with. No timeouts for Scott Frost. Rolls hard to the right, uses the sideline, caught it out of bounds with 55 seconds to go. Kenny Cheatham. Great throw by Frost on the run, but the question is, was Cheatham in bounds? And the answer is yes. Possible tie and overtime. Frost sprints hard to the left. Fires low. Incomplete. When he's incomplete, frequently, as Nebraska fans know, he will be low. He will bounce the ball. So now 51 seconds to go. Second and 10. Larry Smith and Missouri hoping to close out a monumental upset against top-ranked Nebraska. Tom Osborne and the Huskers trying to force a tie and overtime. Second down and 10. Here's Frost, the quarterback from the shotgun deflected incomplete. Diving incomplete. And it is third down and 10. Steve Two Erickson is right there. Yep, Steve Erickson, Brent, number 94, got up and blocked that ball. And it was almost intercepted by Al Sterling. Watch 94 here. Went on his pass rush, Rod Sterling. Boy, that's real close to being inter inter intercepted. Ball hit the ground, though. And the referee was looking right in. Now third and 10 for Nebraska. Fires, got it. First down. Clock will stop at the 28 as Matt Davison, the 6'1 freshman, comes up with a big play for the Cornhuskers with 39 seconds to go. They are now 27 yards away. You think anybody's sitting down in Omaha right now? Or Lincoln? Here's Frost. Rolls to the right. Fires again at the 20-yard line. 
complete clock moving. But that low throw made his receiver go down and not have the ability to get out of bounds and stop the clock. And again, it was Cheetah working the right side. And they stopped the clock by spiking the ball with 21 seconds to go. Field goal won't help them. They must score and then kick an extra point to force this game into overtime. Mizzou and Larry Smith have been there before. Double overtime against Oklahoma State, a win in Stillwater a couple of weeks ago. And now trying to hang on. Nebraska, 20 yards away. Your third down and two is coming up. Davison and Lance Brown are off to the left. Frost wants Cheatham. Got him out of bounds. No, they're going to keep it winding. But it is a first down, remember. So the clock will stop with 14 seconds and a first down for the Cornhuskers. That was a real good throw by Scott Frost. That receiver caught that ball in self-defense. Scott Frost with first down, and he'll stop it. We'll check with the coaches. 14 seconds. And 12 yards away. Well, Dan, you have been in a situation like this so many times before as the quarterback. Teams trying to scramble and, and get a big touchdown at the end of the game. What must a quarterback remind himself of right now? Well, that you have more time than you really think. I mean, each play takes four, five, maybe six seconds. The, the key here is not rush your own mechanics. Just be cool. Do what you do in practice all the time and throw the ball as you normally would. A lot of quarterbacks here will tighten up. They might even panic a little bit here because they feel that they, they have to rush things. Nebraska comes back now. Second down. They'll line up in the shotgun. Frost will come to the wide side. To the end zone. Battle at the two-yard line. Incomplete is the rule. Davison saying he was interfered with by Shad Chris. He's the best defensive back at Missouri, and he did the job on the near side. All right, talk about confidence. A quarterback has in a true freshman receiver, and I think Davison has a beef there. Shad Chris was all over his back. There was contact before the ball got there. Third down. Frost to the middle. Juggle, diamond touchdown, Nebraska. Davison on the deflection. Nebraska's a point away from tying the game. The deflection is caught. The fans have broken into the end zone. They expected the game to be over. But a touchdown was signaled for in the end zone. They'll clear the field and kick for the tie. We could be headed to overtime. Well, they ought to turn the sprinklers on on that end of the field, get the fans back in the stands. This is an incredible play. Frost has all day to throw, looking over the entire field, finally sees somebody he likes. Ball is popped up in the air, kicked up in the air, and Davidson with a dive. Looks like Wiggins was the intended receiver. It looked like Wiggins kicked the ball up in the air. Now Chris Brown. The most important extra point of the season for Nebraska. Needs the good snap. And we go to overtime. Chris Brown sends Nebraska and Missouri into the first overtime. But it was a freshman wide receiver, Davison, who somehow is able to make a miracle catch on a last second deflection of what appeared to be a foot in the end zone. Ball kicked back up in the air by Shevin Wiggins. And Davison dashes in underneath it. And by just the margin of a shoelace, Nebraska has tied Missouri. We'll be right back. We are back. Let's go on first down. Here's a late pitch to Amon Green. And Green crashes inside the 15-yard line. So our officials 
jumped the gun on us just a little bit. But thankfully, you were able to pick up on the end of that play as Amon Green was run out on the far side, and he is just short of a first down. If you can get a first down here in overtime, and they would with another yard. This is second down and one. First overtime, first possession. Scores tied at 38. And Amon Green for the first down to the 12 yard line. So it will be a first down coming up here. Fresh set of downs for Nebraska. So if we had enough excitement in this one, what a great, great college football game this wound up being. And Nebraska, knowing that their number one ranking is on the line, they haven't quit, they haven't buckled. They face down Corby Jones. If I was Tom Osborne, I'd keep that Adidas shoe contract after that last kick in the end zone. First down and 10. Frost runs the option, crashes inside, five, goes for the goal line. Touchdown. And remember, Missouri gets a chance to respond. It's not sudden death, not like the NFL. How about four touchdowns on the ground today and tonight for Scott Frost? Remember the one he dove in earlier in the game for 15 yards out? Similar type of effort here as he sees the cone and goes right by the Tiger for the score. Chris Brown. He adds the extra point, and now Missouri needs seven to force it into a second overtime so we have the Corby Jones trailing 45 38 seven's kind of a magic number today huh Corby Jones wears seven Scott Frost wears seven and, and Larry Smith he likes this record uh, of his Tigers the last couple of years with the overtime in fact he told his ball club this week he said hey why don't we play the entire game like we play overtime I think they have today ready to go from the 25 Take a running play and Corby Jones in trouble. Sprints back on a wide open man chance incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. So there's a play they certainly saved for overtime. Send the big bus here in Missouri. But there were no wide open receivers that time as Nebraska just rushed four men, dropped seven into the secondary. And uh, believe me, Ron James is never going to be your primary receiver. Only has two catches on the year. Couldn't quite make the adjustment on that pass. Second down and 10. Back into the eye with Olivo. Kobe follows Blackwell, and he is down at the 21 yard line, and it is a big third down coming up. Chad Kelsey makes a stop defensively. I mean, don't you think Chad Kelsey is a little bit upset today uh, with the way that uh, Corby Jones has pulled away from him a couple of times? Watch this hit. There's no way that Corby's going to get away from number 57 that time. Needing seven yards for a fresh set of downs. Corby drops back from the option, throws back, diving reception incomplete. Had it for just an instant, and it got away from Stubbing. And fourth down is coming up. But you know, Brent, why didn't they just run the ball on that third down and seven instead of throwing the ball? You have two downs to work with. They played that like it was a normal third down, where if they didn't complete the pass for the first down, they would have to kick. Burn in the corn huskers for a play away from a win. Jones under pressure, it's over. Nebraska wins it in overtime. A miracle finish. The corn huskers stay unbeaten. And a heartbreak for Missouri. Grant Wistrom and Mike Rucker close in. And Tom Osborne knows all too well that he got lucky late against Larry Smith.
Smith and the Missouri Tigers. It was a great college football game.